and hold it as a store of value. It's crystal clear, right? Uh, it's not going to be banned. I think that smart people that are informed know they want to swap out their weak property for strong property or their weak asset for strong asset. But there's a lot of debate there, right? So you know what, what I would say. I would say every property is weaker than Bitcoin. So sell your real estate, sell your equity, sell your bonds, sell your gold, sell your silver, sell your commodities, sell your collectibles, sell everything by Bitcoin. Not everybody fully understands that. I don't know, we're two, three, four, five percent into the education and, and safe. Everybody, everybody in the world understands that the dollar is better than their local currency. There is not a debate. 1.5 billion people in China, everybody in Brazil, everybody in Argentina, everybody in Africa. Absent extraordinary patriotism, you know, idealistic patriotism. Brainwashing is another word for right? it. Right? Let's just say even like 80%, right? The great majority of people, absent the patriots and the idealists, know that they'd like to swap out their weak currency for a strong currency. On the other hand, there's a, a lot of debate in the US or, you know, in, in other markets about do I want to hold the S&P index or do I want to have a second investment property or do I, I want to own some gold or do I want to own commodity baskets? Let's come back to the whole point though. I'm talking about regulators. Gary Gensler's public statements, no less than five or six occasions. He said two, there are two things that stick out, two things that are very important, maybe three, three things. I'm going to reduce the last, you know, everything that's been uttered by the most influential regulators in the world to three things. One thing, Satoshi's innovation is real which is another way to say we have created truly decentralized digital property in cyberspace that is not owned and controlled by any company, any individual or any government. We have common property para to gold or land or commodities. That's the first innov innovation, right? The immaculate conception, as we like to call it yeah. here. And it's another way of saying, if I understand securities law, and if I understand law, and if I understand finance, I will acknowledge that you can create digital property, assuming that you have a fair permissionless network without an ICO or a central party or an investment contract. So we know that Bitcoin has done it. It may theoretically be done again by somebody else, maybe a fork of Bitcoin, right? You could probably your best argument would be a fair fork of Bitcoin now. If it were to fork right now, then maybe the thing that was created could also be deemed as uh, property. I'm not saying it would succeed, right? Like here's your best idea. What if the, if the Chinese government forked Bitcoin and then made it illegal to use the first fork, but the second fork they kept in China, you know, and then they didn't interfere with it any other way. And maybe if Elon Musk forked Bitcoin in Mars and you had Mars coin, China coin and Bitcoin, and all three of them started from the state of the network right now. And then they had some geographic political reason to be separated and you could hold that China wall or that Mars wall up. I mean, there's nobody in Mars, right? But if there was, right? If you could do that, then maybe you have another digital property, right? I, I think that's the, the bar first. is set for altcoiners, basically. This is what you got to do. <laughs> that's a good way to say it. Satoshi set a high bar, but that's the bar. Bitcoin standard is the Satoshi standard is a is a fair distribution without an ICO, without intent to profit on the efforts of others that is just a, a community property. That's the first uh, thing to take away. The second utterance. To be able to trade 24-7, 365 at the speed of light with zero friction is useful in the world of commerce. I think that Gensler recognizes, and I think any fair, a fair regulator or economist or politician recognizes that there's a benefit to be able to move stuff at the speed of light, friction-free, 24-7, 365. The digital, digital transformation of the economy or FinTech, if you will. And for that to manifest itself effectively right now, you need uh, a digital dollar. You need a digital currency. And I've said before, why? Because there's 100 million companies that have collectively invested trillions and trillions of dollars in accounting systems and installed those systems over 30 years so that they can trade with each other. Be because of the inertia of the accounting systems, the systems inertia, the corporate inertia, and the existence of nation states, it means that it is either illegal or impractical 
for all the economic actors to not trade in currencies. As long as the EU and the US dollar, the US exist, and as long as the US dollar and the euro are legal tender, and as long as companies like SAP and Oracle run the accounting for Disney and McDonald's and Pfizer and and the US government and the payroll, et cetera. As long as that happens, you're going to use dollars and euros. But what we know, what we recognize is that um, not being able to move them on the weekend uh, with a computer is holding back the worldwide economy. You know, even today, just about every day, I pick up the phone and then I have to approve wire transfers. Like this is a 30 year old way to move money around. 30 years. So, so we, we still have a situation where it's very challenging to move, uh, to move currencies as a medium of exchange. So the second thing that everybody wants is they want the digital currency and they want, they want a small amount of local currency, digital rupees and digital pesos and digital Nayara and digital. As long as there's a nation state that exists, you need a small amount of that. Hold it for a day, uh, digital boulevards. And then they want a larger amount, like a month worth, a month to a year of uh, digital dollars. The first observation is digital properties and innovation. The second observation is we need digital currency and people need to trust this stuff. And nobody trusts stable coins right now issued by entrepreneurs offshore. The, the never ending Tether FUD, never ending. You know, Tether is an entrepreneurial company. I'm glad they exist and they exist to meet a need. And if my choice was to have money in a bank in Afghanistan or hold Tether dollars in, on my phone, then I would prefer the latter than the former. It's pretty obvious why they exist. If JP Morgan issues a trillion dollars of, of stable coins, it'll be good for the industry. It'll be good for the world. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Silvergate Bank, a publicly traded bank, they just raised five, $480 million last week, by the way. A publicly traded bank with an FDIC license that issues hundreds of billions and then trillions and then tens of trillions of dollars of US dollars. That's the bargain that it takes for the US government to trust the to trust the coin moving. That's just, that, that's the expectation they have. It's not an unreasonable one because there's no way that Facebook or Google or Am Apple or Amazon will ever move trillions of dollars of stable coin around from Tether. It won't happen, right? And there's no way that you will see Microsoft and Amazon and IBM and Pfizer do cross-border payment remittance unless it comes from, uh, unless they have access to a stable coin from a Bank of America or Citigroup Group or whatever. If you're looking for the big use cases for, uh, for these things, you're going to want to have Massive amount of stable coin for all for for global remittance for payments between eight billion people and for the hundred million companies that trade with each other. So that's the second observation, and the, and the third observation that you get over and over again. If there's an ICO and it was issued in you know in expectation of earning a profit, and it is a small group of people. If we're depending on the efforts of others, it meets the meets the definition of an investment contract security. If you if you're currently owning securities or you've issued one, what do you do next? If you're trading them, what do you do next? If you want to issue a stable coin, what do I have to do to get to a stable coin? And that creates a a lot of regulatory uncertainty and overhang if you're if you're a crypto trader, if you're a DeFi exchange, if you're a security token all of those but where is there no overhang if you just want to if you want to own bitcoin as digital property for 100 years and hold it as a store of value it's crystal clear right uh, it's not going to be banned it's not even banned in china i mean per official guidance the chinese don't want you to trade otc it's a capital control issue they have this issue with mining bitcoin which is is, is silly but I have yet to see a bright line edict in Chinese that says you cannot own digital property. They haven't said it. In fact, they've said the opposite. Everywhere else where there's regulatory regulatory action, it seems to me that it's all touching on stablecoin issuance, stablecoin transfer. It's issue. It, it's touching on tax. It's touching on securities laws and leverage. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. 
If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.